I'm very honored to be here, and I want to thank you, all the architects, collaborators, who really were part of the process of healing New York. And let me share with you just a few thoughts I had, because I often think, how did this project develop? You know, I moved to Berlin. I'm a New Yorker from the Bronx, but I moved to Berlin in 1989 in order to build the Jewish Museum in Berlin. It took 12 years to build that building. The building opened in Berlin on September 11, 2001. And only a few hours later, I saw, we all saw, attacks on Ground Zero on New York, on America. And I thought hard about what is the connection of the darkness and evil in Europe with the new murderous ideology which had attacked this country. And I thought, what can be done in this site to imbue the site of Ground Zero with the values of America, the values of freedom, of liberty, of a participatory society, of tolerance, of everything that we love and believe in. Well, I started not by going to a library and reading a book, not by going to the archives, but really retracing my own path to New York. I was an immigrant to New York as a 14-year-old. My parents worked in the sweatshops of New York. My brother-in-law worked in those towers for the Port Authority. And I went to school around the corner at Cooper Union where I saw the towers being built. We often used to go to that site. And when I was lucky to win the competition for the master plan, I thought that the site should become a site of memory. It's not any longer just a piece of real estate on which we can build a lot of impressive buildings, but the site should be left to remember those who perished and those heroes of the fire department, police department, the heroes who were there too of the everyday life. Because that's the axis, that's the power, that's the basis, that's the foundation on which to build a new city, an inspired city which speaks to those values of America and of New York. And so I devoted most of the space, as much as I could, to the memorial. I also suggested that there should be waterfalls in order to screen the sound of busy streets and give intimacy to people when they're there. And I also thought that the memorial should reach all the way deep down to the bedrock of New York, where this tragedy, where those people were lost, and show us through the slurry wall, through those great foundations, how New York rises from its depth to the very skyline, to the very top of the skyline with the tower number one, the Freedom Tower, which is a tower which is 1776 feet tall. Not a cute number. I always thought that it's not important that it be the highest tower in the world. It's important that we look in the sky of New York, we remember that this is about independence, about the declaration of human rights. That is the first document in the world of that sort. Then I thought of the other buildings, the other impressive towers, to spiral around within the grid of New York and to echo the torch of liberty, which I was so lucky to see on that ship coming to New York. I also thought about the streets of New York. The streets, I wanted to distribute the great density of buildings, not to two buildings or three buildings or to one building, but to as many buildings as I could, the five buildings, in order to make the buildings lower, to give a better sense of space to the streets. And you know, I thought of my parents, who were, as I said, workers of New York, they would never be in those impressive towers. That was not their life. They would be on the subways, in the path trains, and on the streets. And I wanted to make that the visceral experience of a new neighborhood facing Hudson River, connecting the many neighborhoods, Chinatown, Battery Park, Wall Street, neighborhoods that were badly damaged during this attack. I also created an additional space, what I call the wedge of light, a space defined by two hours of light the hours that changed the world, 8.46 a.m. on September 11th when the first tower was struck and 10.28 when the second tower collapsed and is now a central skylight of the beautiful Path Terminal. And I wanted to create a space that is imbued with a sense of vitality that is not a sad space, not a space of mourning, but a space where we see the resilience of America, see the resilience of New York. What an incredible city, how lucky we are how lucky I am 
to be able to work there and to live there. After all, it is the city of opportunity. It is true. It is the city of freedom. It is true. It is the city of tolerance. It is the city that tolerates no bigotry. That's the best of America, and that's what Ground Zero is all about. Thank you.